story off guys and start on the passenger side today uh, mostly because this is on the edge of the row uh, this is another third gen here out at East Bethel and they do have a tag on this side this is kind of weird doing it from this way it is a 2000 Plymouth Grand Voyager so it's a final year Voyager final year Plymouth Voyager I should say final year third gen and right off the bat, that slide's really, really, really nice. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. Uh, looks like it's got 15 inch aluminum wheels on it. These are the cool ones, I like these. I had these on my 97. They are 215, 65, 15s. Firestones, I don't know, we got a date code, 2016. So, eh, eight year old tires. Let's walk around. Uh, clearly it's white, ooh, it's an SE with a spoiler. An SE with a spoiler, isn't that fancy? Looks like it's got a tow package on it. And a full-size Goodyear spare under there. Brand new, never seen the road. Uh, the exhaust is in pretty good shape. Grommet's about shot, naturally. It is a North Aurora Auto Mall Chrysler Plymouth Jeep wonder where that is. I don't think that's Minnesota. Oh, it's pretty rusty. It's really rusty. Dog legs are gone for the most part. They're not that bad, though. These doors slide really nice wherever it came from. Uh, it's got the gross kind of beige tan interior. Uh, headliner looks down. It does have... An overhead console, I see. Ah, uh, this thing's got power locks, power windows, power mirrors were present. Looks like it's got an infinity sound system. Full instrument cluster just waiting here to be plucked. There's the infinity radio in it, dual zone climate control. I see a key in the ignition. Cruise control. There's the, looks like somebody needed a light switch, power mirror switch. Let's get up in here. Let's grow a seat. I see a sticker here showing 132,000 miles on 1027 of, I'd like to say that's 17, but I can't, can't quite make that out. Uh, they voted. That's cool. This key is wore out as heck for 130,000. Who knows? You never know. That, can, that sticker could have just been up there. And they've driven it since. But uh, 2017 actually makes sense because right here I see a bunch of 2017 uh, state parks for Wisconsin. Is Aurora in Wisconsin? Is this a Wisconsin van? That could make sense. Uh, everything's been tore apart here. Let's pop into the little box here. Nothing in there. Uh, the under seat one is gone. It has uh, cloth seats. It's got a second row bench and a third row bench present. It's got the fancy sun visors with the dimmable lights for the mirrors. Anything up? Oh, mine's broke. My clip's broke. Nice. Oh, I locked the steering. Looks like it had, this is all broken and everything. Had the open tray down below. Looks like it had the cargo storage mat right here across the two center seats. Um, there's that if you guys wanted it, eight of 99. Um, this fender is gone. That's that's like crazy gone. Uh, somebody took strut out of it. Uh, sway bar link is greased up pretty well, it looks like. Um, brakes are decent. Definitely got some wear on them, but they look decent. Uh, calipers are new. Those are reman calipers. Plymouth. Uh, they took one strut. They didn't take two, they took one. Oh, it's got steel uh, uh, caps here for the uh, valve stems. Wow, Pacific. Fancy. Uh, this fender is the same. That's excessive rust for um, not technically really that much rust for that. That's excessive. Oh, let's pop under the hood. Ooh. 
That is a 3.3 liter V6 paired with a 41TE automatic transmission. Those are remand struts or uh, replacement struts, not remand, but replacement struts. That's probably why that one was taken. See, those fenders are gone. Look, the strut towers are perfect. They've never even been repaired. That one's starting to go. I shouldn't say perfect, but they serviceable. Uh, what do we notice here? Uh, it's pretty greasy. It's got the captive screws in the valve cover, so the newer style valve cover. Uh, this isn't so bad. Transmission's pretty clean looking under there. It's got the newer style uh, transmission mount with the uh, built-in shift linkage mount. It could be, I don't know, when, when was that change made? Was that made uh, before 2000? Because if it was, that would tell me that transmission's newer. Because I don't even see the, the hole to screw the old style mount in. I don't even think it's threaded. Something else I noticed down here is there is some brake fittings that are shiny. Those, uh, those, they're flex lines that go run down the firewall there. They tend to go out, so somebody has, uh, those look like the proper, are those the proper fittings for that? Are those flared? I think those are flared, which is good. So, they did it the right way. Oh, uh, there's a mouse nest up there. Uh, that alternator's got a weird bolt on it. See that right there? What, what's going on there? It's a spacer or something. So that alternator's probably been out. That's probably a replacement. It's kind of shiny. At some point. Not like recently, but it's been done. Um, AC's free. Are these... They don't say Mopar on them. Yeah, they do. There's Mopar. Those are OEM. Looks like it's had plugs on. Those are kind of shiny. Let's take a look underneath. Um, nah, there's there's a lot of grease on that transmission. I don't think so. I think it's just not so greasy. It's clean up top. Uh, it's got a frame oil filter on. Nothing but the best. Uh, it's got a reman starter in it, right? That sticker signifies... Um, what is my luck with the spare keys? <laughs> Look at that. See? This is what I'm talking about. There's one hanging right here. Come here. Can I get this out? I got it. I got it well enough that I uh, shut the camera off. But, uh, yeah. Does it work? Yes, it does. We'll tie that to the other key case anybody needs it <laughs> that one's in a really weird spot I haven't seen that before I have to look underneath in the back oh it's got two keys uh, but yeah everything looks pretty I heard a horn honk um, unmolested I think is what I'm gonna go with looks pretty all original-ish, except that trans mount. I don't know if that could have been by 2000. That could have been a uh, standard because those bolts always like to break off. And I'm sure enough transmission replacements. Uh, Mopar got smart and uh, changed the mount style because <laughs> you always break those bolts off in that mount. Uh, underneath, it's been undercoated. If you can see, um, I think it's an oil undercoating. Yeah, look at the undercoating on it, and then it's got dirt that's stuck to it. It's been undercoated with something anyway. Whole thing's been undercoated. And then it's got plugs. See that right there? See that plug? That is an aftermarket plug, I believe. No, TRW, is that OEM or not? But there's a plug there that they uh, filled the rockers with. And I wonder if they filled all this and then didn't fill the fenders, and that's why the fenders rotted out. Um, the exhaust looks OEM. Uh, brake lines have been redone front to rear, if you notice that. Uh, um, fun going on right there. <laughs> you know. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. It's got rear AC, I just noticed. Did I miss that? Yes, I did. There's a rear AC button. I see the lines plumbed for it. 
Um, yeah, that's a big boy hitch. And with the cutout for the uh, muffler, what what does that do to the strength of the hitch doing that? What kind of, how does that lower the rating? Because the other side's solid. Yeah, it's, the whole thing's been undercoated, so that's nice. Can we leave this hatch open? Yes, it does. Ooh, the shocks work. Shocks work really well. Oh, there's a wasp. Where did he come from? He went in there. He went in the hatch. Nope, there he is again. I hate wasps, guys. I hate them. Hey, look, the owner's manual. Look at that. Well, that's us. Take a look at this. Daimler Chrysler. So, it doesn't say Plymouth on it. At least this, that part doesn't. What do we got going on here? Um, there's some information there about the salesperson. Um, North Aurora, Illinois. It was Illinois. I knew that. I knew that. Um, I knew that sounded familiar. Aurora, Illinois is where this was new. And if we look here, we've got another 2000 Plymouth Voyager owner's manual. And a bunch of other booklets and stuff. Let me kind of poke through this. That's a window sticker, yes it is. Twenty-seven thousand one hundred and five dollars minus four hundred and fifty. Value plus sunscreen glass. Ooh. Base price twenty-one. Infinity system cost $720. This thing had keyless entry with two transmitters. $1825. Very cool. That is super, super cool. Set that back in there, fold that guy back up, set him with that. What else you got in here? Anything fancy? Um, get my dirty fingers all over it. Just all warranty information. I don't see any like, you know, service records or anything. Maybe I do. What is this? Let me look first. Customer care. Get the VIN number. Uh, this guy, this poor salesperson gave them like 20 different um, business cards. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. Riverfront, Chrysler, Plymouth, Jeep. And North Aurora, Illinois. Yeah, I covered up his name. Kind of cool. We'll slide this owner's manual back in here. I already got myself a 2000 Plymouth Voyager owner's manual, so I don't need this one. Gotta, gotta collect them all, right? Something like that. I don't even keep track of which ones I have. I kind of just have a mental note. Gets in there, Mr. Window Sticker. Hopefully somebody takes that. That's kind of cool, but I've got a couple I need to hang on the wall. Do I, do I take this? Yeah, heck with it. It's going to take up no space and it's free. Fine. Thanks. Goodbye. Get in there. Anyway, I think that's going to about do it. Uh, it looks like it's got the wraparound floor mat. As a... What are you? Oh, it's for the it's sticker for the uh, hitch the information. Anyway, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this uh, 2000 Plymouth Grand Voyager at U-Polar Parts 
in East Bethel, and uh, thank you guys for watching.